Can I begin by saying that I am extremely concerned and upset by the Henry Report's findings regarding the unauthorised release of the Kitteridge Report insofar as they relate to me. While I did not leak the report, and I challenge Fairfax to confirm that, I readily concede that some of my actions after I received an advanced copy of the report were extremely unwise and lacked the judgment reasonably expected of a minister in such circumstances. I accept full responsibility for that. The sole reason that I did not disclose the full content of my emails was because of my very strong belief that citizens, be they constituents, members of the public or journalists, ought to be able to communicate with their elected representatives in confidence if they wish. And I think we tamper with that right at our collective peril. However, be all that as it may, that I've always set myself as a minister. I have therefore concluded that I cannot continue to function effectively in these circumstances, given the lapses of judgment that I have shown. The only honourable course for me to follow now is to offer my resignation as a minister. I do that with a very heavy heart and a great deal of reluctance, but I acknowledge there is no credible alternative. The United Future Party's confidence and supply agreement with the national-led government is not affected by my decision, and we will continue to honour that agreement in letter and spirit, as we have done for the last four and a half years. These last few days have been especially difficult for my wife and my family, whose support throughout I acknowledge with huge gratitude. It's been difficult for my staff, whose careers will be affected, for my friends and for my colleagues in the United Future Party. My focus from here on in will be representing my Ohario constituents to the best of my ability and rebuilding my party United Future. I will take a couple of questions in a moment, but I won't be making any further comment after this press conference. For my family's sake, I sincerely request that our privacy be respected at this difficult time. I have acted extraordinarily unwisely, even stupidly, and I'm now resigned to paying the price for that. Uh, there is no credible explanation I can offer you as to why I acted in that way. The fact is, I did. And as a consequence, I face up to my responsibility that I can no longer credibly serve as a minister. What did you do, Rob? What did so you just, do? Just, just, sorry, just, yeah, sorry. With respect, I will take your questions, but one at a time. Yeah, what did you do? What have you done, Rob? If you didn't leak the report, like you say, what, what have you done, Rob? Uh, what, what are the 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 wrong? the um, the fact, in my judgment, that I canvassed the possibility of um, making the report available, even though I didn't do so was a lapse in judgment. So you canvassed the possibility with Andrew Vance making the report? Yes, I did. I, and yes. I think that this is a situation where the crime itself, if there be a crime, is secondary to the possibility being canvassed in the event I didn't go through with it. Why now, I think just, 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 just a second. Why, why would you want to do that? Why did you even canvass? That, look, that is, that is the bit. Why would you want to hurt the key government? That's my no, I, I, I didn't want to hurt the key government. I, as I said, I cannot rationally explain why things happened the way they did. I'm grateful to myself as much as anything else that in the end they didn't proceed in that way, but the lapse of judgment of itself is sufficient. Now, well, someone why, should, why should we believe you when you say you did not leak the report? The, the Henry report all but names you. Yes, it does. The Henry report also records my statement of events as to what happened. And I can tell you clearly what happened. I received the report on the 27th of March. 
As was my custom with all sensitive papers, I took it home in my briefcase that night for safekeeping. It was returned to my office on the Thursday, read by my Chief of Staff, returned to me that evening. That was the Thursday before Easter. Uh, I took it home in the locked briefcase Thursday night. It stayed there until Wednesday the 10th of April. Let me explain what happened in the interim. Uh, on the Saturday, my wife and I left for a holiday in the United States. We returned on the 7th of April. Uh, as is customary in those events, ministers returning home get presented with a big suitcase of papers from the time they've been away. I spent the Sunday afternoon working on those. I didn't really think it was worth bringing two briefcases into the office on Monday. Since the report was still some time off being released, I left it in my locked briefcase at home on the Monday the 8th. I didn't actually bring it to work on the Tuesday either because I was on an early morning flight to Auckland to give a speech uh, before returning to Wellington, and I simply took a, a, a little satchel with the speech notes in it. The report stayed locked in my briefcase until I returned it here on the Wednesday morning, which was uh, the day after it had been released publicly. Why did you decide to protect Andrea Barthes by not releasing it? Uh, as I said, it's not a question of protecting Andrea Vance. It's a question of a belief and a principle that if people communicate with me, and there were 42 emails from her Sorry. to me, that they have a right to have their correspondence treated confidential in, in confidence. I, d I deal with that with constituents who approach me. I deal with that with many other people who approach me. I think one of the, the precious things in our democracy is freedom of communication. Were they sent to, the, to the, your ministerial address or were they sent to a private address? They were sent to my parliamentary address. Was there anything inappropriate in the email? Pardon? Sorry? Was there anything inappropriate in the email? Uh, no. Would no. those emails show that you didn't end up, if you released the full email exchange bet between you and the reporter, would they show that you didn't end up making the report? Um, yes, they would. Um, but I'm not prepared to do that because to do that starts us down a simple path, and this is the point that perhaps I'm, I'm standing most firmly on, that once we start to say that private correspondence to people in official capacities is public property, then I think we start down a very slippery slope. And I, for one, having had a long interest in protecting personal privacy, am not prepared to take that step. Um, now, I, I, accept, I accept the consequences of my actions. I accept that, in retrospect, some of the correspondence, probably had I thought more carefully about it, I might not have sent. But that's happened, and I can't pull back so from that. No. Just, 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 please, just please, please, so, sorry, just sorry. Mr Dunn, there were a couple of other matters that have also been raised about you leaking, as well as the GCSB stuff. I know you've denied leaking those. Was the possibility of leaking those canvassed by you at any point? No. Uh, in fact, if the, if the matters that were raised the other day, if I can remember them correctly, one was a leak of a report from Inland Revenue about Novapay. Uh, when the Minister of Revenue contacts a journalist to talk about the implications for taxpayers of Novapay changes, that is hardly a leak. One was a statement that was published in full. I'm sorry, I'm ducking under cameras to look at you, Rob. One was a p statement that was published in full on my party's website. That is hardly a leak. So I'm not worried about that because those instances don't apply. As to the two other situations, when I was a member of the Intelligence and Security Committee, to which they relate, I discharged my responsibilities fully, including protecting the confidentiality of information received there. Okay. Now, now I'll, I'll, take, I'll take one more from you and someone else will have uh, COVID. Did one of your staff members leak the report? No. How are you sure about that? Because I trust my staff and um, in the period um, when the report was available, uh, the only person who saw it was Rob Eady, and the suggestion that Rob Eady would leak a document is simply preposterous. Here's the story you've got to think about. This document was in a locked briefcase in my home, which was covered by a monitored alarm, uh, which defaults to, if, if I'm, well, my wife aren't there to answer, it defaults first to my office in the event of a break-in, second to the police. My home wasn't entered during that period. Yeah, but that's not the point. Monday the 8th of April, you were back in the country. You uh, and I've got told, an email. Yeah. You, went, you went out for an hour. Yes, and, so and if you look at the time... Happened, of, it could have happened then. If you look at the time of day, it's lunch. <laughs> and if, as I've said to you, the report was still locked at home. Now, Toby, you oh, have a question. Yeah, so, I mean, that, that 50 minutes when you're out of the office on the 8th, yeah. the day before the, the story um, went to print. 
you were supposed to meet Andrew and Mark. Where were you supposed to Oh, I, I headed off in the direction of um, meeting her, uh, but never actually got there. Why? Uh, I left the building, um, walked up the terrace and had... Um, I actually followed John Armstrong for a period and um, thought I should keep my distance. No disrespect. No, just, just hang on, hang on. Um, and then I ended up running into various people that I knew or acquaintances and time just slipped by and slipped by and I thought I'm not actually going to get there. It's so as simple as that, up. basically. And I, then I t came back down through Woodward Street, picked up some lunch and um, returned to my office. Were you, be were you besotted with Andrea Barnes? That's the rumour around power. No, that's Is not. That why you did this? Th there's absolutely nothing in that rumour at all. My relationship with Andrea Barnes has, has been as professional as is my relationship with any other journalist in the gallery. So what, what, what about the Kittowich report were you concerned about that made you consider leaking, leaking the report? I wasn't concerned about the report uh, in that sense. Um, it's a very good report and it sets out, I think, a pretty clear critique of the way in which our security services, well, the GCSB had operated and it was a highly topical issue. It was why going to be published anyway, so why would you not wait for it to be published? Well, I didn't, I didn't leak it. Why, why did you consider it? Let's, I su why that's, were you discussing look, it in 44 yeah, yeah, yeah. emails? That, well, it wasn't. It wasn't discussed in forty-four emails. That's, That's it was. What a, the says. Yes, the report is incorrect in that respect. It was. In, it was discussed in a portion of those but emails. You said but yourself that you had considered leaking the report. Yeah, and, 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 and I, I, look. That's that. What was I, the motivation? Well, if you, if you let me answer the question, I'll tell you. That is the thing that's gone through my mind many, many times um, since those events occurred. I cannot reasonably or rationally explain my actions. I do not know why. I would love to have an answer to that. What I do know is that my actions were inappropriate, that they were wrong in the sense of what would one would expect a minister to carry out, and that is why I offered to the Prime Minister, before he asked, I offered my resignation saying, I cannot continue in these circumstances. What, now, what, what what now I, as I said, I, I've, I've said yeah. twice this is the last question. This I is about... Dunn, what was your intention in meeting Ms Vance at, on, on that Monday? What, was, what were you going to discuss? Well, I've been away for 10 days and just have a catch-up. Were you intending to discuss the report to, to provide her with a copy of the report? I certainly was not intending to provide her with a copy of the report. Do you know who leaked no. the report? No, I don't. Do you think this is the end of any kind of ministerial career for you? I haven't actually thought that far ahead. I have been focused in the last few days on getting through these few days, which have been... Um, as I said to Jane this morning, that I've told you the story. I've told you as best I can uh, my account of how I handle the report. There are certain things I will never be able to explain sufficiently to myself either, and that, that is a, a point of worry. But all of that leads me to the conclusion that as a result of that, my judgment was faulty, and having been someone who has always prided themselves on acting appropriately, I failed my own test, and I therefore pay the price accordingly. And I think that's as it should what be. Is, so on that point, I'd like to... What's the rationale in the emails about why you, why you were thinking about releasing? I mean, you must have had a discussion with Andrew about why you... I'm not even sure there was a rationale, to be perfectly honest, Alison. I just don't... Look, I look... There must be something in there. No, I don't... It gives I, you a clue as to why you did this. You pour over things, you think back over events, you wish you could find the obvious answer as to what happened and why. I can't. I mean, I'm a human being. I've made mistakes, I've acknowledged those, but I'm not responsible for the early release of the report. And given the fact that I've, as I say, failed my own test, it's appropriate I stand down, and that's what I've done. Some people so. think that, that leaking of the report would have been a responsible yeah. thing to do. Oh, I've had those emails, um, but uh, and I see apparently someone told me recently I was trending on Twitter. Twitter as a result. That's all irrelevant, frankly. Um, I have screwed up here. I'm, I'm, accepting, I'm accepting the consequences, and I thank you for your attendance today. So do you think the public are going to do that? Do you think you actually leaked this report? Look, look, the public will form their own conclusions. My conscience is clear. Will you stand again in 2014 in Ohio? I haven't made no decision one way or the other on that. Do you expect John I, Key to and give I won't you make, support? I won't make that call until much, much later in the year. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you.